Welcome back EALD students to yet another EALD video and today we're going to look at the practical exam, uh, the external practical exam. Alright, so the first thing that you will encounter when you sit for your waste examination practical component is the part A, which is also known as the introductory discussion. Uh, it counts for three marks. So what is the introductory discussion? Basically, you um, are expected to discuss uh, some common topics with the examiner. You're expected to engage with the examiner. Don't wait for them to prompt you. Elaborate on your answers. Uh, they're going to ask you questions like, what's your favorite subject in OSMAP? What are your hobbies? What do you like to do during your free time? Uh, so try to elaborate on your answer. Uh, there's already an example given here on the slide itself. You can pause the video to read the example so that you have an understanding of what it means by elaborating on your answer before waiting for the examiner to actually ask you questions about uh, what you like to do or your favorite subject. All right, moving on. Okay, so this is the marking key for Part A introductory discussion. Uh, it already says here, interaction on familiar topics. For you to get full marks, it's three. Um, and it already says here you're supposed to use a wide range of grammar, lexis and cohesive devices. Uh, you're supposed to use appropriate language, appropriate vocabulary, and you're supposed to be uh, speaking fluently and at a good pace. Also, your pronunciation is expected to be very good. You're also supposed to um, interact appropriately. All right, moving on. The next part is part B. It is also known as the visual stimulus or focus questions. And you have 18 marks for this uh, part. And basically, the candidate will discuss an image along with focus questions attached to the image. Um, you should describe the image first. Go into detail when it comes to describing the image. An example is already written here. What you're supposed to do when you describe the image, go in depth with it. Don't just say what you see. Talk about your opinions as well. Answer the focus questions with details. Go in depth with answers. Elaborate on your answers. Explain your answers and give specific examples if you can. When giving your own point of view, make sure that it is justified. Don't just simply say I agree or disagree. Elaborate on that answer. This is the marking key for Part B, Visual Stimulus or Focus Questions. The first criterion is fluency and clarity. And this means your pronunciation, intonation, and stress. Uh, you're expected to speak fluently, clearly. You're expected to give, um, your, basically, your pronunciation should be clear. Uh, your first language and dialect, LD slash one accent, means your first language and dialect. If we can understand you without effort, then it's okay for you to get full marks. The next criterion, criterion two for part B, is linguistic resources and this is basically your vocabulary combined with your grammar uh, we're gonna look at how appropriate how accurate your vocabulary is and if your grammar is correct or not and it counts for five marks in total so for you to get five you have to make sure that you do not make gram grammatical errors um, and your very your language your vocabulary is very appropriate very accurate All right moving on the third criterion is the content component, and this is the prepared response to visual stimulus and focus questions. So you're supposed to give a very well-structured interpretation of the visual stimulus and focus questions. Uh, your answers have to go into detail. And again, it counts for five marks in total. And the last part of the part B is called the unseen question. This is your fourth criterion. Uh, when issued an unseen question, candidate the candidate must answer in detail. Uh, don't wait for the examiner to prompt you. It means you don't wait for them to ask you questions. You yourself give the answers immediately. Give valid, specific, and detailed responses. Um, try not to hesitate or have long pauses when you answer the unseen question. You can take a few seconds to think the question over but try not to leave the pauses to be too long because then you know you won't have enough time to go in depth with your unseen question. This is the marking criterion for the unseen question. 
uh, and it already says your interaction on unseen question. Full marks is three, and it says here interact spontaneously and responds coherently. Response is relevant and detailed. So you're expected to go into detail when it comes to uh, even the interaction on unseen question. So in total, it all counts for 18 marks. Moving on. All right, so the next part uh, that you have to sit for is part C, the course issue or topic discussion. And this counts for 20 marks. So for part C, candidate the candidate must talk about the course issue or topic from both units, unit 3 and unit 4, in detail. So you get into unit 3, pick a specific topic. Because Unit 3, we studied so many things, right? Racism, multiculturalism, um, migration, things like that. Pick a topic that you really are interested in. Explain what you have learned about that topic. Give your opinion or perspective. Justify your opinion. And then provide textual evidence. Uh, you can use, you know, the movies, the short stories, the poems, documentary, whatever other text that we studied in Unit 3. Remember, for Unit 3, it is Australia as a cultural community. Keyword, Australia. So all the texts must be Australian texts. And whatever we've studied in class for Unit 3, they are guaranteed Australian texts. It's better if you guys stick to that. Moving on. Okay, so this is the marking key for Part C. Uh, you'll see the first criterion is the same as Part B, fluency and clarity. Again, it's about the pronunciation, intonation, and stress. It also counts for five marks. And criterion two, linguistic resources. Again, it's the same thing as uh, the previous part for part B. We're looking at your vocabulary, how accurate and appropriate your language is, the grammar. Again, five marks. And then you have criterion three, unit three content. So this is where you discuss Australia as a cultural community. You talk about an issue related to that. Uh, you give um, a detailed explanation on your cultural understanding, cultural variations and attitudes. Uh, presents a relevant, a well-developed example. Okay, uh, basically the textual evidence. And it counts for five marks as well. Now let's move on to the next part. Part C, course issue or topic discussion. Again, uh, unit four content now. So in Unit 4, you're stud you study language and empowerment. That is your topic. You cannot pick and choose. Basically, you're going to talk about language empowerment and disempowerment. So talk about what it is. Explain in detail what is language and empowerment. Give valid and in-depth explanations. Talk about disempowerment as well, especially when prompted. When the examiner asks you about disempowerment, don't just brush it aside. Talk about it. Relate to persuasive techniques. Uh, and explain in detail each persuasive technique found in texts, as in the diverse media texts that you've studied, speeches. Explain how the techniques empower or disempower people. Uh, go in depth when you give your explanation. Uh, talk about those persuasive techniques in detail. Don't just say, oh, you know, um, I studied how like you can use facts to uh, help people become empowered. Give exactly the name of that persuasive technique. Tell them it is evidence, uh, use of evidence, use of facts, uh, appeal to authority, for example. Or if it's a, a persuasive technique like metaphor, then explain what a metaphor is and where you found it in which text, and then explain in detail how does that persuasive technique actually help? How does it empower or disempower someone? Let's look at the marking key. And this is the marking key for Criterion 4, Unit 4 for Part B, uh, for, sorry, Part C. And it says here, analyzes and evaluates course issues, topics related to the unit focus, which is language and empowerment, including how language is used to empower and disempower, provides numerous examples of a variety of language techniques used to empower or disempower, and clearly explains how each is used. And again, overall, it's five marks. So this is what you're expected to do. And you uh, talk when you do your oral presentations, your 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 waste practical oral examination for both. Uh, sorry, for all three parts, part A, B, and C. So in total, uh, it counts for 35 marks. Okay, and that's it.